Well, hello and welcome back, my Royal Rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue, and we are on another live stream tonight. This time talking about the Royals and non-Royals, as usual. You know that we are live through YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And if you want closed captions, subtitles, as I'm speaking, you can activate those closed captions on YouTube and Facebook manually. Remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss any of these uh, live streams and to download my 100 battle language tips in the description of this video or in the bio of any platform that you are watching this from. So we are ready to begin with this reports, gossip, name it the way that you want, but this is coming at one point or another sooner than later. Meghan Markle's ex-husband's explosive memoir could drop six major bombshells on Duchess. And we're talking about Trevor Engelson. You remember Trevor, right? Yes, but also today we will be having some comments about those casting decisions in the season six, sixth season of The Crown from Netflix and an analysis of a very cringe moment when Megan will just push Harry away. We're going to do a body language analysis as well. But going back to, we're starting the topic that brings us together today. Megan 42 and film producer Trevor 46 were in a relationship for more than half a decade. The pair got married in 2011 and divorced two years later after having been together for around six years prior to their nuptials. So we're talking about quite a few years, so many things, so many experiences we still, of course, don't know. Uh, and most probably the entire memoirs will not be dedicated to Megan. He could do it and he could make, make good money with that. But I can imagine that at least one chapter of that book should be dedicated to the Duchess of Sausages in that era. Well, you know, she was um, she was not a Duchess still. She was a mostly a, an unknown actress trying to thrive in this uh, in in this difficult world. They have both since married other people: Meghan, Prince Harry, and Trevor who is the CEO of the production company Underground, has been married to nutritionist Tracy Curlin since 2019. But what would be the implications of this memoir? I'm going to tell you this is, uh, it's, it's an insight. It would be an insight into, you know, the psyche of uh, Megan. In this case, the magazine went on to speculation about what could be mentioned in this memoir. It said that, this could include the rumor that Meghan blindsided him with divorce, reportedly returning her wedding and engagement rings by post. That is a non-confirmed rumor, but that will be as juicy as it gets. That will be a right. Uh, it, it, that would be not the final nail in the coffin. There's so much more. There's so much more that. Uh, so many gossip, so much gossip, so many rumors that we need to confirm. But I'm sure that Trevor could give us very good insights on those years and have a better understanding of where does Meghan Markle come from. That will be a big service to humanity. It added that the end of the marriage itself could be referenced with Meghan said to have cited irreconcilable differences in 2013. The former couple are understood to have ended their relationship after her relocation to Canada for suits. A source said that she was a completely different person when she moved to Toronto for the show. They suggested that the split was sudden and so ruthlessly done, speculating that Trevor may have felt used by the former actor. Well, all this is, of course, unconfirmed gossip, but it's when you begin to uh, like connect the dots, fill in the blanks, and realize that what we do know about the Duchess from her mouth and from, well, recollections in the media and from books like Tom Bauer's Revenge and even Finding Freedom, you see that, well, this actually fits with uh, Meghan Markle's behavior. 
Like when she got something that she wanted, maybe moving to Toronto to keep her uh, filming suits, then it was a different era of her life. It was a different version of Megan, which we are used to those reinventions that he has uh, gone through uh, like six or seven times. I, I don't know. I, I, I should I should make some kind of counting of those reinventions. And that's why she was a completely different person. That would make so much sense in so many ways. Well, yes, maybe as Miranda says, he was just another stepping stone for her. That's the way, that is a bit sad that uh, someone like Megan uses people, just uses people and just goes forward into the next. Just like, you know, those reports that we have seen that about George Clooney and Amal, I think they, they were never really a thing. You know that George, remember that George said, well, I did not really know Megan when I attended her wedding, but it's, it's good for, you know, the pictures and the headlines, right? But that is the problem. And that's why I tell you so many times over and over again, why it's so important that when you uh, are thinking of entering a relationship with, uh, uh, with someone, you have to like find out or ask about family and friends. What is their relationship? How many friends do they have? How they get along at work and or whatever they do. And if they don't have much of a relationship with their family and they don't have that many friends, that is already a red flag because you know that, well, who are you surrounding yourself with? Who is your 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 intimate circle who was your circle of trust that that is important because sometimes narcissists like in this case they just burn those bridges again and again and again and again and dump people the moment the minute they have served their purpose and that's one of the things that you have to take uh well uh, like uh, be wary of that kind of behaviors that's that's why that kind of things reportedly returning her wedding and engagement rings by post. That fits. That fits. Yeah, Clooney, thank you, small person. Clooney was defending her initially. Clooney initially defended Megan, but uh, he said, no, this is not worth it. Oh, no, this, uh, I, I'm beginning to see through the facade. I'm beginning to see through the, the mask. Rhonda, yes, narcissists never change. I agree. Their facades change. They change their mask to suit their surroundings. And they make sure that's why there's another thing I want to. This is always important. They make sure that the people that they are meeting in this new setting, in this new environment, have no clue of the people in the former environment or the former version of the person, they have no contact because they know if the current people, say Harry, finds out about the previous friends and family that she left behind, then he's going to realize that something is, fi is fishy and maybe Harry would have run at some point. But we know that Harry was too infatuated. I know some kind of uh, witchery at work here. We don't know. But the ginger winger just fell into the spell and the rest is, as for now, history. And that's why we need to move on to our second topic of today. And this, uh, I'm going to play this, I'm going to keep this playing, is in slow motion. This is from the event where Megan and Harry were, you know, talking about mental health for the youth, for... Because social media is effectively, that's a thing, is destroying people's uh, minds, especially young, the younger generations, which are still in that developing phase. But you know that Megan never loses that touch, that she needs to be the one who is the protagonist of any, any setting, of any circumstances. And she had to make sure in some way or another that... Uh, having those hugs, of course, because you know that she's a hugger. You know that that's another thing. When you try to define your brand by something that upsets people, that is that is quite a thing nowadays. That is something that people can do. You 
acquire this persona of, oh my God, I love hugging people. And Megan assumed this kind of technique or hugging persona because she knew that it was going to be in direct contrast with the royal family. Oh, she was going to be a different kind of royal, much more approachable, right? Oh, how warm, how beautiful, how that, that's part of their strategy. That strategy is perfectly valid. You have to differentiate yourself from whoever you don't want to be associated with. But Megan wants to be associated um, with the royal family, but be seen as I'm a better version. I'm a better kind of royal. I'm the future of the royal family, but they haven't realized that yet. That's why she does this all the time. And she makes sure there, that you already saw that a couple of times, that gesture from Harry. He is moving to greet the man who is going to greet them. Okay, that is nice. I'm going to see this, this right now. Right now, he moves Harry with a neutral hand to handshake, to sh shake the man's hand. He goes for that. I see that the man has his lips a bit pressed. Uh, maybe he was a bit uncomfortable. But then Megan just goes between Harry and him immediately to hug the guy. And I don't know about you, but no, this is not uh, something that you do in formal settings. Maybe that's why Harry lowers his, uh, his head, looks to the floor, touches his nose, he's nervous, he doesn't like it. Maybe he didn't like being there, but at the same time, it's obvious that Harry did not like Meghan immediately breaking the handshake, even if this is in slow motion. You know that handshake is a, is a couple shakes. You um, um, keep um, eye contact with the person and maybe share a couple words, a uh, couple remarks. But even if this was very quick, Megan instantly got in between for, a, for an invasion of intimate personal space, more like intimate space. Personal space is when you're talking to someone, you have like uh, 50 to 60 centimeters, like a couple feet, one or two feet uh, between you and them. And uh, But intimate space is a hug, something that is, in my opinion, completely out of the question in any formal setting. I think it's not only my opinion, something that I wouldn't do because yeah, most people don't like to be touched, uh, much less if they, are, if you are complete strangers to them. So Megan is just trying to do this artificial warmth to be seen as, oh, how cute are you? A different kind of royal. And we know that so many people still talk about uh, Megan, as she's some some kind of royal, right? Which uh, we know is no longer the case. Uh, it, was, was she a real royal at some point? An actual royal? I would like to see what do you think about that. No, that, that guy doesn't look happy, Mary. I agree. But there's something that you might have missed, even if I made sure to point that out right at the end of the video, after Megan hugs him, and they separate. That poor guy didn't want to put his face near her naked shoulder. Oh, yeah, at the same time, yes, you, you are right, but uh, it, it's, it's a bit uncomfortable, right? So much skin uh, there. That, that's not something that is uh, a custom, but, but you can see that there's this, uh, he's holding her hand up to the end. Maybe he didn't like it, but he was holding Megan's hand. She, he was holding Megan's hand uh, even as he was hugging her. But, so I don't think that he did uh, completely did not like the hug. And maybe he liked it a bit because if he didn't like it, he would not be hugging, uh, holding Megan's hand after that hug. It all in all, it's something uncomfortable. Uh, and maybe it's even some kind of power play here. Yeah, there you have it. The, uh, they are, they're holding hands, and maybe that's why Harry was so uncomfortable with this. And also, thanks to Megan's mole, we got this clip. Watch as Megan flirts and touches the U.S. Surgeon General right in front of her husband's clueless nose. 
Yes. You know that is Megan's attitude. I am not I, I don't want to sound too harsh on, on this, too petty. But you are in the formal setting. You are talking to uh I don't know, someone that, who is not uh, a close friend. I don't know, touching them in the shoulder again and again. I can understand something when you're greeting them, that you shake their hand and with the other hand, you make a, just a quick, almost uh, unnoticeable tap in the arm. Okay? What, whatever happens from the shoulder to the elbow, it doesn't matter. It's usually... Fine, that's an area what we are used to, a slight tap on the arm. The back is always a bit more condescending. You should do it only with people that you know. And with uh, from the elbow to the wrist, it's a bit, uh, could be a bit uncomfortable because it would mm, feel like you are leading them. You have to know a bit of NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, to do that kind of advanced touching so people doesn't notice that you're leading them. But uh, the problem is that if you are caught in a camera doing that, it will it, it will always uh, look bad because it, this is a formal setting. This is no way the right moment to be touching someone like this. Uh, so that 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 is uh, the problem with Megan. She wants to come out. She is desperately trying to come out as relatable approachable, huggable, and all that able that she wants to be seen. But no, it, 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 is, uh, it, it is cringe. It seems forced. And I understand that her fans can say, oh my God, she's having a great time. And people around her are having a, a great time. Yes, this, this is going to look like that to them. But I'm sure, I'm sure that if, if uh, these people saw their partner uh, behaving like this with a total stranger, they they would not be keen on that. I'm sure about that. You know that this double standards, those double standards will pop up the moment you see this doing a person that you truly care about, a person that will you will feel jealous about doing this kind of things with uh, perfect strangers. Uh, no, this is this is not the way and. Yeah, it's uh, pitiful that Harry. Harry, what happened to your head? What? What? What is this? Oh my God! Oh my God! I I don't I don't like to point out that that much. You know that I've dropped that topic altogether. I don't want to uh to to talk uh, about that topic anymore. But this video was what is this? Oh my God, Harry, you should shave that off. I'm sure you look way more manly. Wear more manly if you shave that off. She did worse than that with total strangers. Yes, Sally, I agree. It has happened already. Oh, my God. Emily, I agree. Warning, marrying Meghan Markle increases your risk of memoir writing. Oh, the stories they must have. Oh, my God. You're on point. Even if there they they should have been enough uh, non disclosure agreements around to prevent that kind of things. Thanks, Rita. So let's move. Let's move on to our next topic. Let's move on to our next topic. And I need to talk about this. Where is this? Oh, my God. I, I messed this something up. I messed this something up. Uh, yeah, okay. We're right here. Let's move on, on to our next topic of today. You know that season six of The Crown is coming. You know that absolutely fiction, loosely based on actual events, but you know that it's a novelization of the real thing. And when I saw this, I, I saw what what are we looking at exactly? And I have to, I have to, I have so many things to say about this. But first, I want to mention that the producers of this series are thinking or have the intention or there's rumors that they're going to bring back Diana in the form of a ghost. Like the actual Elizabeth Arden ghost. I mean, it's, it's yes, it's like a Jedi ghost coming to tell William and Harry about the Force and all that stuff. I, I have no idea how, how could that work, but I just... 
Uh, it, it was a bit difficult coming up with this meme because you know that Diana is a difficult topic. I don't want to upset people, uh, especially William, of course, but it, it was too easy to come up with this. Yeah, this is what Netflix wants to do. And it will be corny as well as you can imagine. But my other question was regarding the stand-ins, the kids that are going to interpret William and Harry. I mean, what is this? The kids playing William and Harry in The Crown Season 6 look like they are about to take the ring to Mordor. I, I, I don't know if you get that, uh, that reference. In case you don't get that reference, when I'm talking about Frodo and Sam, but... I can tell you that someone beat me at my meme game and it was Tries Britannia. Tries Britannia on Twitter. Reasons uh, 6,000, I'm not watching The Crown. Draco Malfoy and Ron Weasley are in it. I cannot unsee this. I cannot unsee this. And some of you are saying, no, but no, Ron Weasley is one thing and Prince Harry is another thing. And Prince William is one thing, and Draco Malfoy is another thing. Why are we so geeky? I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a total geek for all this stuff. I have to tell you. No more titles. Meg complains openly on the internet. William was such a heartthrob at this age. Why did they do this to him? And William, at this age, was already taller than Charles. I mean, what happened? Is this the discount version? Like like the discount Barbie Ken? This is the discount William? Like the Alipay, Alibaba William? The Wish. The, the, the William you order from Wish. I don't, I don't know. So many. So I, I don't want to. Maybe maybe the actor, the kid is as a, as a good actor. But I'm talking about, I don't know. You know, you know that there's a word uh, uh, in English called resemblance, right? resemblance, it's its a thing. And this is another thing I came up with. Uh, to your left, that is the little prince, William. But to the right is the Lord of the Flies, William. Big difference. That I think, yes, uh, I, I'm that kind of thing. I, I, cannot, I cannot help this uh, kind of reference. And by the way, when I was goofing around with mid-journey, uh, making all this kind of, uh, try, trying to come up with Diana, Force Gulf, Jedi, Jedi Ghost, I came up with this. Uh, you know, maybe you can screenshot that or you can go to my Twitter account for a better, a high quality version. Uh, this was on point. You know, this artificial Im image creations, it's obvious that this image does not exist, but it's entertaining nonetheless. And in that regard, of course, you were asking, we need William in a Jedi a uh, master, a uh, Jedi master, uh, uh, you know, all, all the attire, all the dress, all the costume, and there you have it. Um, Prince William as a Jedi master chilling out and a very British version of R2-D2. I, I guess that this version of R2-D2 can keep the tea hot, piping hot tea and serve it on at five o'clock every day. Uh, you can, as you can imagine, and of course, People said, but what about Megan? We, we need a version of Megan and Harold about this. And the version of Megan and Harold that I came up with was Darth Griftius and General Hassa. Um, but th 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 this will be the, the dark side of the of the Rogels or the or the Arm Rogels, the Rejected Rogels, the Mexited Rogels. You know, the Mexit is like the 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 dark side of uh, the the force, right? In this case, Darth Griftius. Some of you uh, don't don't agree that Megan could be a, a a Sith Lord, but this is just for entertainment purposes. And this meme from Library of Life, the, uh, keep uh, this was a good uh, good laugh, a bit unrealistic. I'm gonna explain why. Uh, <laughs> Her late Majesty uh, with the knighthood of Sir Patrick Stewart, the man, the myth, the legend, Patrick Stewart. And uh, Harry telling William, should we tell her that's from Star Wars and not Star Trek? And William, nah. And I say this is unrealistic, not, not because 
uh, Her Majesty is using a lightsaber to knight uh, Patrick Stewart, but nobody believes that Harry would get that de uh, that reference. Nobody believes that. That is completely unrealistic. I, I can have some suspension of disbelief to understand how lightsabers work, but I, my suspension of disbelief cannot get as far as believing that Harry is capable of such a remark. So the meme should be uh, redone. The meme should be redone in any way because, no, this this could not happen in real life. No, with um, lightsabers and all. Oh, my God, we have, we have had a lot of fun today. I don't know which, uh, maybe I can leave this one. You like this... Uh, this one, well, I read your comments. We have, we had four minutes today. Four minutes today. <laughs> Sarah, thanks for your super chat. Oh, El Mayo, I love to. Uh, Lords of the Rings compassion, very, comparison, very accurate. The Netflix Hobbit rendition is cringe. Yes, that's what we got today with... Uh, Knows William and Harry and and just this kid. I have to mention this kid. You know that I don't know. I I can see I'm between between Generation X and being a millennial myself. But I I don't like telephone calls. I mean I I hate telephone calls with a passion. And this is my face when someone keeps trying to call me instead of texting me. I'm not going to pick up the phone. I am not. This is my face. When I look at the phone, I said, why, why do these people keep, keep calling me? I'm not going, no, 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 no. Hang up. No. Text. I don't like, I don't like it at all. I mean, at all. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. I'm, I'm sure that this guys, I hope that they have a, an amazing career. Uh, this is not, uh, I'm not criticizing them as actors. Maybe they are amazing actors. But uh, man, uh, this uh, this is not it. Even Harry was cuter at that age. My God, this is this is, this is something. This is not bad. Well, let's see. Let's. Uh, I don't know how many of you give uh, Netflix and The Crown a pass. So many of you say that you don't watch that uh, stuff, and I I concur with you. It's uh, like we only have to fight whatever lies they want to. Uh, pass out as truth and that uh, that's serious oh my god yes i am such an introvert maybe not an introvert and in, in the, uh, I, i'm an, i'm like an enigma i don't like telephone calls uh i don't have much trouble now uh, having a conversation with total strangers i have no problem talking to hundreds of people at a stage but yes, it's, uh, I, 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 no, I don't know. text, please text and, and please do, do me a favor. As long as you can send a text and not a two minute voice note, I'll be thankful as well. I will be thankful. One minute, one minute to end. Oh my God, more super chat. Thank you. Dustus girl. Thank you, Dustus girl for being here. Thank you. Uh, Lady Freddy, you can hold a hand to control the distance between you and the person moving in. Yeah, that is absolutely like, like that. Like that uh, can and peel. That can and peel meme. I, I should uh, show that can and peel meme at some point because that is a perfect, perfect sample of how, how people would feel about Megan step it in to invade their uh, intimate space and going for a hug because she is a hugger. Well, this was so much fun and I, I, I so enjoy this live stream. This live stream will keep coming and remember that I will going, I'm going to publish these videos as standalones right after this. My Roger Rogue is, my name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Roger Rogue and until we meet in another video or another live, remember the two most important words. Much love and bliss. Take care. I love every single one of you.